A few weeks ago, VOFO sent me a pre-production version of the VOFO A229 Duo, a quad high definition front and rear dash camera. So I started testing it out and I have my results in this particular video. I do have a couple other videos in a playlist, so make sure you check out the video description section for that playlist to get the full review after you watch this video. So let's get into it. This video contains several video chapters. If there's one of particular interest to you, jump to the time index listed on the screen here, or expand the video description section and click on the link down there. Hope you enjoy the video. Let's walk through the list of features on the side of the box. We start off with the dual channel quad high definition front and rear cameras. The resolution options for the two cameras are 2560 by 1440 at 30 frames per second or 1920 by 1080 at 30 frames per second. Next, we have the specifications for the front camera and I've included the rear camera information as well. The front has an aperture of f1.6 with a field of view of 140 degrees and the rear camera has an aperture rating of f1.8 with a field of view of 160 degrees. Both the front and rear cameras use the same Sony Starvis IMX335 5 megapixel image sensor. The front camera has a 2.4 inch high definition screen. The GPS logger is also the front camera's windshield mount. And notice that the GPS logger has a 5 pin connection now to the front camera. When the dash camera is powered by the HK4 hardwiring kit and the hardwiring kit is plugged into the GPS logger, the GPS logger will fully power down now using that fifth pin to indicate when it should power down when the dash camera is powered off. The A229 has built-in Wi-Fi support for connection speeds over 2.4 GHz or 5 GHz Wi-Fi connections. The optional CPL filter, which is sold separately, can be installed on the front camera to help reduce glare and window reflections from the front windshield. The OFO also sells an optional Bluetooth remote, which you can then connect over Bluetooth to the camera. When you press the button, it will lock the currently recording video files. Let's take a look what's inside the box. I've removed the outer sleeve and the box cover. And on the top here, we have the front camera inside of a plastic protective bag. And here's a look at the screen side of the A229 front camera. Here's the windshield side of the A229 front camera. On the bottom, we have the front lens. It can be rotated up and down for adjustment, but not side to side. Right now, it has a protective film on it that needs to be removed before use. And above that, we have the GPS logger and windshield mount. Below the section that holds the front camera, we have this read before installation card and the information about checking things before you actually install it in the vehicle. And there are two windshield static stickers that can be useful in installing the dash camera and easily removing it, although I don't tend to use those for my particular installations. Once you remove the cardboard separator, below that you have the additional installation supplies and the rear dash camera. Here are all the items that were in the bottom of the box. In the upper right, we have the rear camera. Just to the left of that in the center, we have the six meter in length coaxial cable that's used to connect the rear camera to the front camera. I'm glad to see that a coaxial cable is used here because the T130's USB cable was quite difficult at times to route due to its thickness throughout the vehicle. Upper left, we have spare adhesive pads in case you need to move the cameras or you need to replace the window glass and remount the cameras on the replacement glass a micro SD USB card reader. In the lower left, we have the data cable used to connect the cam front camera to your computer. In the center bottom, we have the USB adapter, the 12 volt to USB power adapter supplied with the unit. And in the lower right, we have the 3.5 meter in length type A to type C power cable that you would use with that USB adapter. And in the Center right, we have the trim tool, and I caution again, if you route any wires throughout your vehicle, make sure you don't lay them over any airbags that would cause them not to deploy correctly. Here's a look at the windshield side of the front camera with the GPS logger removed. You simply slide the camera to the right 
and it will disengage the four tabs that are on the TPS logger and you can remove the camera quite easily, assuming that you disconnect any cables connected to it. This is the right side of the A229 front camera. On the left side of this picture, we have the rear camera connection port for the coaxial cable that connects the front and rear cameras. To the right of that, we have the micro SD card slot. No micro SD card is included with this product. You'll have to purchase one separately. The A229 supports micro SD cards with a capacity of up to 256 gigabytes. I purchased a VOFO 128GB MLC industrial microSD card for my testing of this product. And to the right of the microSD card slot, we have the external microphone connection port. If you would like to purchase an optional external microphone to gather the audio from some location other than the internal microphone inside of the front camera, you can connect it here. Now we're looking at the left side of the A229 front camera. In the center section there, we have the recessed reset button. And to the extreme right there, we have the Type-C USB port, which is a power in. And this is where the data cable, when you connect it to your computer, plugs into the dash camera. Here's a close-up view of the A229 front camera's camera lens. And please note the only adjustment with the camera lens is up and down, no side-to-side -side adjustments. Here's a picture of the optional CPL filter installed on the front camera. The CPL filter is a friction mount CPL filter on the front camera lens and you have to make sure that you press firmly to get it fully installed. Otherwise it may not be fully pressed up against the camera lens end and it will cause the CPL filter mounting case to show up in the video that was recorded by the camera. It was also found to be necessary to rotate the CPL filter by about 4 to 5 millimeters on my particular A229 with the particular CPL filter I had to fully eliminate all the windshield glare and reflections. This is the VOFO HK4 hardwiring kit. This is the recommended hardwiring kit for the T130, A229 Duo, and the A119 Mini. VOFO recommends the use of the HK4 to power the dash camera if you're going to be using the parking mode feature of this dash camera. The HK4 can be used in vehicles with 12 volt or 24 volt systems. The HK4 is a three wire hardwiring kit which would connect to the vehicle's fuse panel or a dash cam battery pack. The HK4 has a low voltage battery protection function which protects your vehicle's battery from being discharged. You can set it to one of the pre-selected values uh, for a 12 volt system for example of 12.4, 12.2, 12.0, or 11.8. I would recommend no value lower than 12.2. The HK4 is sold separately from the dash camera so make sure you consider the purchase of this if you're considering using the parking mode feature of this dash camera. There will be a link down in the video description section for this product. In this section, I'll present some sample video footage I gathered with the A229 Duo front and rear cameras. Be aware that I do have two other separate videos that show the front and rear cameras day and night footage, and then I have a, a second video that shows the front camera with and without CPL filters, comparing them also against the VFO T130, and a Blackview DR750X 2 Channel Plus in one of the videos, and a Blackview DR750X 3 Channel Plus in the other video. After watching this video, please check out this video's description section for the link to the A229 Duo playlist. It has those two sample videos I just mentioned, plus a video that talks about the firmware settings for the A229 Duo as well. As part of my review process for this pre-production VOFO A229 Duo dash camera, I ran it through a series of scenarios looking at the power consumption in each of those test scenarios. I used a 12 volt power supply set at 12.6 volts so that all the readings here are gathered at 12.6 volts. The values in the watts columns were converted from the milliamp values based on the fact that the power supply was producing 12.6 volts when those values were observed except for the values displayed in the low voltage cutoff test because the low voltage cutoff took place at 11.75 volts and the watts values were calculated with that voltage level. These four line items show the power consumption for normal recording mode with the Wi-Fi turned on and off and then the front camera screen turned on and off and the normal mode video bitrate selection was maximum for these tests. 
These three rows show the power consumption, while in the three different types of parking modes. AED is for outer event detection, TLR is for time lapse recording, and LBR is for low bit rate. One thing I'd like to draw your attention to is the auto event detection. When I first started testing this unit with the earlier firmwares, the power consumption would actually drop down into the 300 milliamp range and stay there until the first motion event took place. As soon as that first motion event took place, the power consumption ramped up to the 340 to 360 milliamp range, and then it would stay at that level for the remainder of the auto event detection parking mode. But the one thing that was found is that very first video recording file did not contain any of the buffered video before the motion event. Beginning with firmware version 1.0 underscore 0516, the power consumption is now consistent as it first enters into AED parking mode. It is in the 340 to 360 milliamp range, and the very first motion event, the video files generated from that, do contain the buffered video before the event. The next three tests are related to parking recording duration timer being used for each of the three different parking modes. The timer is set to a predetermined amount of time that you want to allow the dash camera to run in parking mode. And after that, it should power down the dash camera in some fashion. And after the 30 minutes that I set it to, it simply powered down the dash camera. And initially the power draw was at 20 milliamps and it tapered off to nine milliamps after about 120 seconds and stayed at that rate for however long I would let it go. There was a person on a dash cam talk website that claimed that actually it should go into some sort of super saver mode of power for power consumption and then uh, it should be able to awaken the camera by impact event or motion or some some sort of event to awaken it and i could not find that behavior to be present in this dash camera at all it simply powers down the dash camera after the timer expires this test is a test of the viofo hk4 low voltage cutoff feature I wanted to see how much power the unit continued to draw after the low voltage feature kicked in and turned off the power to the dash camera. I had the HK4 configured to have a cutoff voltage of 11.8 volts. I started off the test at 12.6 volts being output by the DC power supply and I decreased the output voltage by 0.1 volts and I would leave it at that voltage for two minutes and if the low voltage cutoff feature didn't kick in, I would I move on to the next value after two minutes. And finally, when I reached 11.8 volts, I decided to start going in 0.05 volt increments. And when I decreased the value to 11.75 volts, after one minute, 20 seconds, the low voltage cutoff feature kicked in. And it immediately dropped to four milliamps. From that point, no matter how long I would let it go, it would still continue to draw four milliamps. And the last two tests I have on this chart are related to the use of the power button to turn off the dash camera. A typical use case for us is, of course, to drive the vehicle, go out and drive it, go into parking mode, do all the normal things. But once we arrive back at home, we'll turn off the ignition, which turns off the accessory power, and we'll use the power button on the dash camera to turn off the dash camera. And it goes into a low draw state at that point. And I wanted to see how much that low draw state was. Because we do see, even with the low voltage cutoff, that there's still a small amount being drawn by the HK4 itself. So I wanted to see what the total draw was for the HK4 plus the dash camera in this powered off state. With the vehicle accessory power off, and then I pressed the power button to power off the dash camera, initially the power draw would drop to 28 milliamps, and over a three minute period, it would float down to an eight milliamp value and it would stay at eight milliamps for the remainder of the time that I would leave it in that state. Then I ran the same test, except I had the accessory power still on, the ignition was still on in the vehicle, and initially the dash camera and the HK4 together were drawing 14 milliamps and then they dropped down to 12 milliamps after about a one minute period. And then once I turned off the accessory power, it then floated down to the eight milliamp value that I observed in the other test. I hope you find the data in this power consumption chart for the A229 Duo helpful, possibly in the purchase of a dash cam battery pack or how long your vehicle's battery might be able to power the dash cam in parking mode. I want to go through a demonstration of using the VFO app on an Android device running Android 10 to connect to the A229 Duo front camera. So I'm selecting the Wi-Fi network SSID that's defined in the firmware settings in the dash camera. And once I've connected to that, I'm going to then bring up the VFO app, click on the connect your camera button, and that'll be presented with the main panel of the app. 
Here you can see the live view and the record button is active showing that the camera is recording and for the video stored on the dash camera you have to stop the recording same as if you were trying to go into the firmware settings section. Now we're going to see the video files stored on the micro SD card based on date and there's categories for locked files and parking files. Of course we're in the all files listing. You can click on the play button here and then it'll present this play panel and you can click play here and it'll start playing it right then and there. That may be sufficient for what you're trying to do at that point in time, but if you need to download the video file to give to someone else or to save for an insurance claim, the 5G connectivity is very fast. This is of course sped up with an elapsed timer on the bottom to show the true time. So that's a single file download. So now if we go back to the main file listing, again, I'm looking at locked files and parking files. Let's go back to all files. I click select, and then I can tap on each one that I want to download. And then I click on the download button on the bottom. And again, this is sped up here with the elapsed timer on the bottom. Having five gigahertz connectivity to the dash cam certainly speeds up the file downloads. So that's an example of multiple file downloads. And now let's figure out where they're actually stored on my Android 10 device. So I resumed the video recording, exiting the app. On my Android 10 device, I have an application called Total Commander, which is a file browsing app. And I go into the emulated storage DSIM directory, and then there's a VFO application directory underneath that. And there are the three video files that I just downloaded. So you can use that location then to copy them off if necessary to hand off to someone else, be it police or someone that you were able to capture an accident for them and hand that off to them. But it's quick and easy to download the video files using the VOFO dashcam app to your phone device. Here are the things I liked about the VOFO A229 Duo dash camera. I love the fact that the A229 Duo has a front and rear camera that are quad high definition capable cameras producing 2560 by 1440 30 frames per second video and they use the Sony Starvis IMX335 5 megapixel image sensor in both cameras. The VIOFA A229 Duo generates quad high definition video for both front and rear cameras so having a large capacity micro SD card might be a good idea. The A229 Duo supports micro SD cards with the capacity of up to 256 gigabytes. For my testing purposes, I purchased a VOFO 128 gigabyte MLC micro SD card. I like the fact that the A229 Duo front and rear cameras are connected using a coaxial cable. At maximum, it's 2.8 millimeters in width, making the installation in the vehicle much easier compared to the 5mm width cable used for the A129 dash camera and especially much easier than the cable, the USB cable used to connect the T130 front and rear cameras. I like the fact that the A229 Duo supports three different types of parking modes. Auto event detection, which is a motion based detection around the vehicle front and rear cameras, will record up to 45 seconds worth of video. Even though the marketing information says one minute, it's actually 45 seconds and it's a buffered auto event detection, it will include about 15 seconds before the event and 30 seconds after the event. The next parking mode type is low bit rate. This records continuously while in parking mode and the nice thing about this is it includes audio. I use this as my preferred parking mode type if the camera supports it and the A229 Duo does support it. One thing I noticed on the marketing site, it states that it records at four megabytes per second for both front and rear cameras but it actually should be a lowercase b for megabits. And I reviewed various parking mode files and found it was around 4.1 megabits per second. And the third parking mode type is time-lapse. Time-lapse records at one, two, three, five or 10 frames per second, but with no audio. So if a dash camera doesn't support low bit rate with audio, this is usually the other type of parking mode that I will enable in the dash camera. And here's my list of things I wish would be improved with this dash camera. This dash camera has a price of 240 US dollars, which is a decent price for the feature set. But the one thing I wish it would include or, and many other dash cameras should include is a micro SD card that is compatible with the dash camera. 
The dashcam buyer has to spend an additional 25 to 50 US dollars depending on the manufacturer and capacity of the micro SD card just to make the dashcam work. It's like buying a brand new car without tires. And before you can drive it home, you have to separately buy four tires and get them installed before you can drive it home. A micro SD card is essential to have the dash cam work, and there should at least be a sample micro SD card to allow you to test out the camera. And if you need to buy a micro SD card with a larger capacity based on how you're going to use it, that's up to you to buy the larger capacity micro SD card. The A229 Duo that I was sent by Viofo is a pre-production unit. And as you can see in this video footage, and it's been acknowledged by my VFO representative, that the rear camera does appear to be out of focus. Apparently it's just with my particular unit. This should not hopefully be an issue in any of the production units. During my testing, I adjusted the video bitrate setting in the firmware settings to see what the video looked like. And I noticed that the video generated when set to maximum or high did have some stuttering occurring when I was playing back the video. I sent that raw video to Viofo for review and they confirmed that one to three video frames were getting dropped about every two seconds. Viofo Engineering is seeing if they can optimize the video generation process at those bitrate settings or if they have to make an adjustment to the actual generated bitrate for those user selectable settings. I hope to see this resolved in a future firmware release for this A229 Duo dash camera. I hope you found the video to be informative and giving you the necessary information to make an informed choice of whether the Viofo A229 Duo dash camera is the one for you. Please check out the other videos in that video playlist that show the example videos day and night comparing it against other cameras with and without CPL filters installed on the front camera so you can get the full picture of what this dash camera can do. Again, this is a pre-production unit and there were some issues in the early firmware that were resolved by later firmwares, so it will only get better as time goes on. Please make sure you check out the video description section for additional information, the playlist I mentioned for the additional videos for this dash camera, and there might be affiliate links down there. And if you decide to purchase the dash camera through one of those affiliate links or any of the accessories, I will make a commission on that purchase, but at no extra cost to you. If you find this video to be informative, make sure you hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hit that bell notification to be notified when I upload new videos just like this. And thanks for coming to the channel and checking out the video. See you in the next one.